Hi guys, my name is Heather and I'm so glad you're here. Today I thought I would come on and share a tutorial on how I created this very simple no sew junk journal. And um, we're going to make it from a composition notebook, which is a very simple thing to find at any place that sells school supplies. And we are going to use an, a completely no sew binding, which makes it a little bit more approachable, especially if you are a beginner. Um, and also, if you have been making journals for a long time, I think it would be a really great project for you, like if you wanted to use it to give a gift to someone or just not have to mess with all the fancy binding. So um, I really, really enjoyed this project and I hope that you'll like it. I'm going to walk you through step by step from the beginning. Uh, we're going to make the covers and then fill the pages and um, then at the end we are going to decorate it just a little bit. So I hope you enjoy the process and let's get started. Okay, we're ready to begin. So the first thing that you want to make sure you have is a composition notebook. Um, you can get these anywhere. I think I got mine at the dollar store or maybe Walmart. They're only about a dollar. And then we're going to create the cover out of this. So the first step, well actually I'll show you. Um, this is kind of one that's ready to go. So I've cut it to size and then you're going to put your papers inside like this and then we are going to tie it closed um, and I'll show you how we're going to do all this completely no sew. So um, get your book and then you're just going to take like, you know, a good hunk of pages and kind of rip them out and keep going until you get to the middle and then they'll just kind of fall out on their own. It's pretty simple. It only takes a second and then they'll start falling out like that. And that's it. And then you have your book is ready. I mean your covers are ready. What I really like about these is the fact that it has this sort of rounded so it's going to accommodate the papers that when you put them in see how instead of it just being completely flat and it pumping up there you're kind of rounding it and it gives more room for the papers so that's why I really really like this composition book idea so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it to size so open it up get yourself a sheet of um, just paper that you're gonna a regular standard size sheet of paper and fold it in half move this out of the way so for these journals we are going to be using this size of paper we're just going to take a standard size sheet of paper and fold it in half and that's going to be I feel like that's the easiest journal that you can make. You certainly can adjust the sizes, you know, as you get as you go or if you're a beginner, this is going to be a really great way for you not to have to measure too much for your pages. So, um, when you fold your paper, so this is about how big we want our book to be is, you know, all of our pages are going to be about this size. So, what we're going to do is mark where we want to cut the book or cut the cover so um i think it's so cool how it has this ruler in here <laughs> um okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give it a little bit of room because you want you want your book to kind of or your pages to kind of have a little bit more room you know at the end so i'm just going to cut right there where that ruler is and i'm not even going to have to mark it so I'm going to cut there, and then um, for here, I'm just going to do this. So that way, we know right where we are cutting. And um, you could kind of just cut it and not do this step, but I figured for the sake of the video, I would do that. Because when I first made it, I did not do that step. So take your scissors and just cut along your edge. I mean your line. Does not have to be perfect because 
Um, we are going to cover all this with papers. So, you know, it really does not have to be perfect. So for this, what did I say I was going to do? I guess I'm going to cut a little bit inside this line here. Maybe like there. So for this one, I'm just kind of winging it, hoping for the best. And then once you have one side done, you could use that to give you your second side. So there we go. Now we have it cut and it's ready for our papers. See, wasn't that so easy? And then for these little things, you should save these because um, we could make like bookmarks or something out of them. So save those and we'll decorate those later. All right, so there is our cover and we are ready now to pick our papers and we're gonna assemble the papers next. Okay, our next step is gonna be to pick our papers. And so for this journal, I'm gonna choose 10 sheets of paper and I wanted to tell you that maybe if you're a beginner, um, you might want to choose as many papers as you can that are just standard size sheets of paper. So this is an eight and a half by 11 standard size um, copy paper and I've tea dyed um, my papers. So I will show you um, I will show you what I picked for this book. So um, I did pick a couple papers that are shorter, like this one. So for example, when you put it in, it's not gonna be as big, and I'll show you how you're gonna do that whenever it comes to the binding. But um, for the most part, I have picked, um, this one is shorter, but for the most part, I've picked mostly just standard size sheets of paper. So you're just going to take your papers and start folding them in half. And you're going to go through all of your papers and fold like that, whatever direction you want. I kind of want this one to be like falling on the outside like that. So um, I folded it that way. And you're going to go through and fold every paper. Um, yeah, I think I'll just fold this one like this. Now this one was a little bit bigger than standard size. So what I did was I just tore the edges to fit so that it would be about that size. So, um, we are going to do this like this and then this and you're going to start kind of making your book. And what, what I like to do is I like to mix up my papers. I like to do um, some whites mixed with creams. I like to mix them. I don't like to put them all the same color because then it just kind of becomes boring. You kind of want to mix up your papers. And I'll walk, I'll walk you through and show you what I chose. So I took this page out of a book. Um, I'm going to show you that. Actually, here. I have it here. This is called A Wildflower Alphabet, and Elizabeth Cameron is the author. And oh my goodness, it is the most amazing book. My mom gave this to me, and it has some of the most beautiful, beautiful images inside. And um, so I took a page out of this book, and um, I'm going to use it for the center. So that's this one. And then I chose um, a piece of ledger paper. It's just blank ledger paper, and it was a little bit too big. So what I did was I, I took that standard size sheet of paper, and then I just wanted to make sure that I lined it up and made it. So I just folded it over right where it needed to be so that it would be right in those correct measurements. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing here. So this one, and then um, 
this one is just tea dyed. They're all tea dyed. This is a piece of parchment paper that I used whenever I was tea dyeing. I had put it under my papers in my oven and it just kind of came out wrinkly so I cut it to size and I used that. It's just baking parchment. And then um, this, this paper here is a cream colored um, printer paper and I tea dyed that. I tend to do a pretty light tea dyeing. I don't I don't tend to do a lot of like really really dark blotchy stuff I just like a real light tea dyeing to my papers so that's what I did with those and then this um, this white paper I wanted to show you it is a printer paper um, called linen business paper and it's in the color white they do have some other colors but I really like the white because I print on this a lot and I love to print my printables that I have in my shop on this paper. It has like a texture. I'm going to show you. It has like this linen texture, which is so nice. And um, I hope you could see that. But um, it's a really great paper. And you can also, if you live in the United States, um, you can get this at Walmart too. And or you can like I've bought it at Staples. You or I think you can even order it on Amazon. I'm not sure about right now with all of the restrictions, but um, yeah, it's a really great paper for printing all of your printables and everything. I love it, and it has a nice nice weight to it. So, anyways, that's what this paper is, and then I just tea dipped it in some tea dye. So we're gonna fold that, and then now this is um, a. A piece of vintage music paper and um, if you have a paper that's pretty fragile and like this one could probably rip easily so I'm gonna get some washi tape and I am going to show you that you can just sort of like put the washi tape down the middle you could also use um masking tape just put the washi tape down the middle to kind of reinforce that fold so that way whenever you we're going to be using a hole punch so whenever you go to um use that hole punch in there it's going to keep it from ripping So yeah, or you could use any kind of, like, masking tape works really good too because it kind of just goes with the um, color of the paper. But the washi tape peeking through will be kind of nice, I think. So then just fold that in half like that, and it gives it a little bit more stability for the paper not to rip. So there we have that, and then these are our pages we already folded. So we have 10 pages all together. One, flip this one around, two. So this is going to be the center. And I like how you can see this part up here. And then this is going to be a little pocket. Okay. And you, you don't have to use ledger paper. You could use any of your papers that you want. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of how you can put your papers together. So this is going to be our book. And that is going to be, see how the washi tape will kind of like um, peek through there? I love that. And this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you are going to want to flatten it all down to the bottom. This is an important step because the next step is going to be our binding and we are going to be punching holes in all of these papers. And when I show you how it works, you'll get why you kind of have to do that. So let's start with, let's start with these ones. Okay, so you're going to get your hole puncher, and it doesn't ma really matter what size it is, I don't think. It's just, um, just a standard size hole puncher, 
and then um, you're gonna do one maybe two sheets at a time will do but um, take your sheets so the first two are just regular paper they're not well I guess this one is a little bit shorter so I'll, sh I'll show you so you want to make sure that your the bottom of all of your papers is is even and then you're just gonna take your pull punch and you're gonna push it as far as it'll go so that it doesn't uh, stop I mean so that it can't go any farther and then right where you folded you're just gonna punch okay and then you're gonna take your step flip it around make sure those are lined up and then you're gonna do the same thing make sure your creases are creased pull in as far as you'll go and punch so there's your first two pages and as you go you kind of want to make sure that you are lining up your papers so that they will they will fit so I want to make sure that this shorter paper is flat whenever I you know tack it down like that then you take your hole punch you push it in right on that fold and punch so basically you're lining up all these punches together okay and then you could flip this over because this is shorter and make sure your folds are lining up and punch this one I probably screwed up a little bit because I got too far to the edge but um, it's really not gonna matter once it's in because what it what it happens is once you get your ribbon in the middle of your book it will hold them all in place so like if you'll look on this white paper here I don't have a hole punched in that I only have it punched at the bottom so the top hole from this previous paper is holding that paper inside so don't freak out if you if you kind of don't get it perfect um, okay so let's keep going so our next two just tap it down these ones are the same size make sure your creases are right and punch and the same here and then two more now you could use if you're fussy because I'm not I don't like measuring and <laughs> I'm really just kind of winging it and just throw it together kind of girl so if you're fussy and you were if you're worried about these holes not being you know reinforced enough you could put hole reinforcers on every one of your your punches so if that makes you feel better but in I've made several of these journals and honestly I haven't had any problems so um, just make sure you flatten your page to the bottom make sure that's creased and it's just such a simple process really so basically why you're doing this is it's gonna save you the step of um, so for this one I'm gonna I'm gonna use this because I'm not gonna do a hole in the top so I'm just gonna do the hole in the bottom on this one see like that and then once you have all of your papers punched you will line them up and there will be a hole there for you to um, for you to I don't know why that's but I think I might have messed up one there but we'll we'll figure it out when it comes time to binding but basically that's the concept so then that gives you a bigger hole so that you don't have to use a needle and thread to sew your book shut um, you'll just be able to thread some ribbon through there so that's gonna be um, our next step but first we have to line up the holes with our cover so all of our papers are gonna go inside 
of our book like this, okay? And then the next step that we need to do is we need to um, take one of the sheets and right where the cover folds, you're going to line your fold up right in the center, okay? And then you're going to want to use, this is an, I think it's called an owl, I'm not sure, but um, an awl maybe, but if you don't have one of these, you could use like a screwdriver or even like the point of a, of a knife. Um, and then you're just going to want to make a hole in your cover like that, right where you have your holes lined up for your papers. Just like that. Super easy. So now you have two holes in your cover so that your ribbon can pass through there too. So then get all your papers and get them in your book. And then the next step is going to be to put our ribbon through. Okay, so I've got my ribbon here. I'm going to use this Hug Snug. Um, it's just seam binding. And uh, you could use any, really, you could use any type of ribbon you want. Um, anything thin. I was going to maybe try this on one of them, you know, like a baker's twine. You could use um, some type of cording or whatever floats your boat. And then just the only thing you is you're going to want to make sure that you cut it so that it's like kind of like at a point because those are the, you're going to be feeding that through your hole. So what we'll do is we'll start at the top and you're just going to feed your ribbon through each sheet of paper. And you could use your little owl tool, owl tool, whatever that is, to kind of help you if you, it would probably be easier to do it that way, like to shove it through. And then just keep going, feeding it through all of your papers. Yeah, this one, the one sheet I cut too close to the top. So I might have to tape that or something or glue it once I get this book together. But you know what? It's a junk journal, so there's really just no worries. You're not going to mess up. It's meant to look, in my opinion, messy and kind of like, not really messy, but just kind of handmade and put together. I love that about um, a junk journal. I love the, the ripped edges and the things that aren't so perfect. Okay, so we've got our papers through the first hole. Now this paper here, this paper here doesn't have a hole at the top, so it's still loose, but the rest of our papers are together. Then you're going to flip it over and you just want to get this through your, um, your cover here. You want to get that ribbon through there like that. And then you can start working a little bit easier. Um, I guess the best way to do this is going to be like this. I don't know if you could see. So we're just going to poke through all of our holes. Keep working it until Just reline your papers back up. Keep working it until you get this ribbon through all of the holes. And then once you have that done, your book is going to be assembled. And it literally takes such a short amount of time to do this. I think the hardest part maybe is picking out your papers. So once you start getting the hang of that when you're making a journal, I don't know what am I doing here? Okay, last one. Okay, 
So we've got all of our papers in on the bottom and the top. And got them nice and snug. Flip it over, see how the ribbon is on the outside. And we're eventually gonna cover that up with fabric. So you just tighten that up and you're just gonna tie it. That's it. Tie it in a knot and try to get as as taunt as you can get it. Um, you don't want it to be real loose because if this ribbon is too loose, then your papers will slide around a lot and you don't really want that. So just do the best that you can to get that ribbon nice and kind of snug. And then I just cut it off um, how I like it. And you could leave some long and put some charms down here or whatever, but I'm just, for now, I'm gonna leave it like that. And that is our book. So you got your cover and then all of your pages. Oh, I'm, I messed that up. I put that in backwards, but oh well. I wanted, I wanted, oh wait, no, I'm not gonna do that. I wanted this part to be in the front of the book, <laughs> but I messed it up, but that's okay. So I still like that, okay. And then all of your pages, see how that washi tape shows there? I love that. Um, and I really like the mixing of the creams with the whites. Um, some people are really afraid to use white in their journals, and I really love the, I love bright white. I love to mix bright white, and I really, really do. I like to mix all of those shades of whites and creams. Um, and then this is, this is so cute, this little page. And then here's our center, and there's our pages. So now our book is together. Isn't that awesome? And it was really so easy. So... Our next step is going to be that we're going to decorate our cover. Okay, so now we are ready to decorate our front and back covers. And I went ahead and picked out a few papers that I wanted to use and also some fabric. So what you're going to need to get is some papers for your front and a little bit of paper for the back. And then we are going to put fabric along this binding here. So before we go any farther though, I wanted to show you real quick, um, if you wanted to add some little, littler pages, oh by the way, I went back in and I fixed my page. <laughs> when I took a little break there, I fixed my page because it was bugging me that I didn't have it in the front the way that I wanted it. So anyways, um, I wanted to add these book pages. And because, so if you go and you fold them in half, then they're really short and it wouldn't have really worked. I mean, I could have put, I could have put it at the bottom, but I wanted to show you a really easy way to add in a few, um, like shorter pieces now that you have your book together and you can just slide it under and in between so come back here and find out where that's coming through. And you can just slide it in like that and it's gonna hold it in place. So you could go through your book and you could add, you know, a couple um, book pages or whatever, whatever little um, ephemera you have and just tuck them in to make some shorter pages to kind of give it that real junk journal type feel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this page too. I love this book page here because it says, um, hold on, let me just get the back pushed through and then I'll show you. But it says the blue garden. I love that. And I plan on using, um, the blues on the, on the cover. So it kind of makes me happy. So yeah, you can go through and add a couple little small pages to add to your to your book and it just gives you some tiny little places that maybe you could put a little postcard or something. So okay, so let's get started on our on our cover. Um the first thing that I like to do 
is I like to just cover this base with some tea dyed paper. Now, whenever you tea dye paper, you know that it gets a little bit crumply. So I really like that texture. And what I did was I just went and I, um, I cut it to the side. I ripped it actually, cause I wanted that edge along the edge of this journal. So I just cut it to the size of the, of the front. And you can leave this because we're gonna cover this with fabric. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. And I'm using Fabri-Tac glue, which actually I'll just put it on here, which I love. I use this glue <clears throat> pretty much for everything. It holds really well. It dries really well. It works good with printables. So basically just glue that on there and kind of fix it to the size. And I like how the edges are frayed and it gives like a nice little, <coughs> excuse me, like a nice little layer. And then flip it over and do the same on the back. Yeah, I'll do it like this. So yeah, I like to just kind of since we're not going to do any sewing for this journal, because that's the purpose, um, it's nice to kind of add a little bit of layering to give yourself some texture. Because if you would just put, let's just say you glued a flat piece of paper to your journal, which you can do, and it's a very clean look, but for this particular project, we want it to be kind of... Um, layered and a little bit crumply you know what I mean so if you just put a flat piece of paper on your journal cover and that was it it, it would just be you know kind of like a normal book but because we're going to add all these layers it's really going to give it some nice texture at the end and um I really like it so let's see the next thing I want to add is um well, actually, real quick, I want to tell you about this fabric. So, I am going to use this fabric, just like this, to kind of cover that side. And I ripped it to the size of the book. And it's actually a denim. And it's from a little girl's... I, I got this at the thrift store. It's from a little girl's... Um, jacket it's so cute and I thought oh my gosh I could use like the pockets in there but this is one of my favorite things to do is to go to the thrift stores and buy some clothing that I like the pattern of the fabric and then like kind of take apart like I cut the sleeve off to make the the journal here and kind of take it apart in the pieces that you could even like do these little pieces and and have something like a button or whatever but yeah, so that is a little jean jacket. So what I did was I just cut it to fit because I want it to wrap around this journal like this. So I did that by tearing the fabric. And then on the back, I'm going to have it come across like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it um, longer on the back, or wider, I mean, than the front. Okay, so the next step is going to be, um, I wanted to use this book page and what I did was I took the book page and I just kind of crumpled it a little bit because again, I wanted to add a little bit of texture to my page. Um, and every layer that I put on, I'm kind of just trying to give it a little bit more, um, of a texture. Something's going on with my glue. Okay, I am back now. I'm going to retry this with the glue. I'm going to glue. Oh, this glue, it comes out really, really fast. So I got to watch. So basically, um, you know, because I crumpled all that paper up, it gives it like a, I don't know, little bit more texture. And 
every layer we add kind of gives, you know, just a little bit more texture to the page. So I want to put this wallpaper, let me just organize myself here. I want to put this wallpaper right in the middle here, like this. And then I kind of wanted to add this paper behind it. But I wanted to be able to see that herbs in the garden. And then I have a little piece of this flocked, or it's called dotted Swiss, I think that's what it's called. But I was thinking I'll add a little bit to the bottom. So we cut that off. And we can add that to the bottom like that. And then once the fabric is on there, it's going to look like that. Okay? So let's get that in place. And, you know, you can just use your, your own um, imagination or creativity to put your papers together. But I really like to add... A mix of like white with the cream again if you'll notice that I'm doing that on the on the cover instead of making your papers all the same color I like to have that variation of color I'm gonna glue that pretty good I love this blue wallpaper because it has such a pretty Pattern. I love blue is my favorite color so I always pick blue I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in here like that just give it a little bit of white at the bottom kind of and there we go and then I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the back papers so, okay, so I'm going to have this coming over here like this, and then um, this is going to be across the back like that, but I thought I would just go ahead and add maybe a couple papers along the edge here just to give it a little bit more of something yeah that's what I'm gonna do okay so I'm gonna go ahead and glue that into place oh my gosh this glue is coming out like in gobs I need to fix that so today it was started out to be kind of sunny here and then now it is so cloudy and overcast so I hope my video isn't turning out too dark you know how you always want to well if you make videos you kind of want to always make videos on a sunny day but lately I don't seem to be making those sunny days so that's what we're gonna do with that okay so the next step is gonna be to glue our fabric in place and the Fabri-Tac glue is perfect is the perfect glue for this because it really works well on fabric so I'm just gonna put a line of glue down here and you want to get it pretty good and close to the edge because you want that fabric to be held pretty sturdy like that there and then flip it over and I don't really worry too much about gluing that this part I more just wrap it in glue um, I will put a little bit down here but I don't really like it to glue too much there because sometimes I feel like it gives it a little bit of wrinkles so and then I'm just going to smooth it out and then I'm going to glue this very edge I 
I mean, you could use any fabric that you want. It doesn't have to be denim or... Um, the one thing I will say, though, is if you choose a fabric for this project, I would maybe choose something that tears kind of nicely because if it doesn't, then it, you're not going to have that sort of frayed look on your on your book, which I think is really pretty. So there is our journal, and we have completed it from beginning to end. And I think the hardest part about it is really just picking your papers and picking what you want to put on the front, like like decorating it. But um, I think if you go with, you know, putting some layers on the front like that and tearing your paper, um, it gives it such a nice look. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I think that the next step that we should do is I will go through and we will add a few tabs, maybe a pocket and a flip out. So that way you can get um, a better idea of just creating a simple junk journal. And I really think this is a good project for a beginner. Um, because if you've never made a junk journal before or you've never um, created a book like this before, this would be a great way to do it. Or if you wanted to give one for a gift, I think this is a really easy, simple, super quick way to put um, a junk journal together. Okay guys, so the next step that we are going to do is um, to decorate a little bit on the inside of the journal just to get you started. I thought I would just go through and add a few little tabs and a couple other things to just give the journal a little bit more um, pretty on the inside. So um, I, I'm going to start here and the, the, what I thought I would do on the inside is I'm going to take a little bit of paper here and this paper is um, a printable that is not yet in my Etsy shop as of now but it's coming soon it's so pretty it's um, a piece of vintage wallpaper so I'm just gonna fold it right where I want it to stop on the end there and um, just going to rip it so that we can put it in there, like that. Just wanna give that front cover a little bit of color. And I'm kinda of doing a blue theme with this journal where I'm gonna add a lot of blue kind of details. So, so there we have that. And then, um, I'm going to put this little pocket here to flip out. And I have these pockets on a previous video if you look on my channel. And I'll link that link, the link below on this video so that you can see how I created these pockets. But I'm going to add that as a little flip out. And we are going to use some little heart, some little heart vintage wallpaper cutouts. So all I did was take a heart punch and punch it out of some vintage wallpaper. And so that we're gonna do that um, right there. Let's see, do I want it? I want it like right there. So I'm just gonna line it up, get some glue, and I'm gonna put it on my heart. Like, just like that. And then, I am going to just place the heart down like this. What I really need right now is my bone folder, which I don't know where that is. So I guess I'll just use the back of my scissors. But if you have a bone folder, that would be a really good time to use that to kind of smooth that glue. And we want to make a, a fold on that piece of wallpaper so that it'll flip. And then we're going to do it on the next one. If you get um, a piece of wallpaper or some type of paper that's a little bit fragile, you could kind of like reinforce the back with some masking tape or 
something to give it a little bit more strength to hold up to this pocket kind of folding in and out. But you really want to kind of get something in that crease to kind of really give it that definition there so that when it folds, you know, it's not going to give you a hard time. So there. Isn't that so cute? And that is so simple. Super easy, super simple. And then we will just add a cute little tag. I made this little tag. Um, it says some days you have to create your own sunshine. And I do really feel that way. And I feel like journaling and creating art books um, is such a way of just... I don't know coping with life like I love to just sit and create I, I tend to be able to forget about a lot of the things going on and I just love to come into my craft room and cut and paste so okay so then the next page we're gonna do is we've got that done um, I think we'll do this here so maybe we can add this little postcard here and have that flip out there. And the way that we can do that is with washi tape. So I'm just gonna, I'm basically just trying to show you a few little things that you can do to make your journal a little bit more special. And then once you are ready to come in and journal on it, in it, then you already have a few little things in there that are just so cute and they kind of go with the colors and everything. So then just put your washi tape there and there you have a little flip out. Oh, I guess I have to, I guess that's too much washi tape there. I'm going to trim that a little bit like that. There. So there we have a little flip out. I don't really like how that is too far from the edge, so I'm going to redo it. Okay. Okay, so sometimes this happens, and if you do any kind of art, then you already know that. So I'm going to make it a little bit closer to the edge there, so that when it flips out, it's closer. <laughs> like that. Yeah, that looks better to me. So there. Okay, so now we have a little flip out with our cute little postcard. And I think I wanna add a little bit of lace here because, so when you want, when you make your journals and you want some little things peeking out the bottom, you know, a good thing to do is add little touches of lace here and there. And it gives you that little, kind of like a tab on the bottom, but with lace. So there. So that's just kind of like the beginning part of this page. And you can see how you could come in and you could just add your artwork and your journaling if you if you choose or um, whatever. So I think I'm going to cut that piece a little bit so that it doesn't get caught in that seam. Okay, so then the next thing I think we'll do is we will... Let's go here. Okay, so how about if we do, I have some leftover fabric from um, the cover. So I tore a little piece to kind of fit on the page. So I thought maybe we could do a little belly band here. And then on this side, so this was a printable and I printed it, but I don't really like how this is just kind of plain. So I have this vintage um, vintage French book page, and I think I'm going to glue it right on there to kind of just give it a little bit more something pretty on that page. And by adding these little touches whenever you make your journal, you kind of just get, get it ready for whenever you want to come in and do whatever you're gonna do with it. 
you know, sometimes people don't always use a journal for daily journaling. Like, you know, this is what I did today and you know, you don't always necessarily need to use a journal like this to journal your daily life. I love to use these journals just to make art. I love to just come in and pick a page and just create art with pretty images and pretty papers. And um, I'm really happy with that. That to me is just getting my art out there. Like it's, it, it like gets my art out into the world or something. I don't know. But, um... Okay, so we put glue, I wasn't explaining, we put glue on both sides and now we have a little belly band. So then you can add some pretty ephemera that you have, or I have a tag and an old postcard, so I just love that. I think that looks so pretty. Okay, so then the next thing we can do is, let's go to... Um, Let's go to, let's go here. So I love this middle page so much. It's so pretty. And I picked it, actually H is for Heather because Heather is my name. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I am going to, I am going to take one of these little girls. These little printables are in my Etsy shop. Isn't she just, like, the cutest thing you've ever seen? I don't know. I just love her. She looks like a little boho hippie chick. But I'm going to cover this little corner and make it a kind of a little tuck. And I think I'm just going to staple it on. I'm just going to staple. Right? Oh, yeah. And then here. And then... Now you can take your whatever you have and you can just add a little, you know, it's a little tuck spot. And then on this side, hi Isla, this is my little kitty, she, her name's Isla, she's getting about to visit me here. Um, on this side, so this is remember the ledger paper that we folded over. So what I need to do is I need to add a little bit of glue here. Oh, Isla, you can't come up here because I'm in the middle of this. And we'll glue that down and then I am going to be back so that I can get Isla out of the room. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So what I did was, I took Isla out of the room, <laughs> but what I did was I glued here and I took here, I glued there. And so now we have a little tuck spot here. And um, I want to decorate this like a little bit over here. And I thought it would be a good place to kind of add a, a tab, you know, like, um, you know how we love these little tabs that stick out of the book kind of that you can see. So I wanted to add this piece of sorry trim that I have and then maybe this little piece of lace and just. I'm just going to glue it down. I like it. And I'm just going to let it peek over the edge just a tiny little bit. And that'll be kind of like a tab. So just put a little glue down. And press it down. I like it to look just a little bit, you know, rumply or something. Whatever the right word is. And then I'm going to take my lace and do the same thing. Just gonna put a little bit of glue and then tap it down to hold it. And I'm gonna glue there right where the design is so that way you don't really see the glue through that pretty netting. Okay, so it doesn't want to stick. Okay, there we go. So then do you see how we have this kind of peeking out the edge, which I love. And then we can put something pretty inside of our little tuck. And it's so cute. So there we have a page. I think that just is, looks so cute. 
all right so then the next thing we'll skip, skip a couple pages whoops and we will maybe go to hmm Maybe we'll do, I have this extra piece of wallpaper from um, from the front cover, so maybe I'll add it there. Or, or maybe I'll add this here. Okay, so I kind of want to add another piece of lace to kind of come out the bottom. So yeah, I'm just going to add that lace right there along the bottom of this page. And then that way it'll be kind of peeking out when your journal's closed, which will look so cute. And then, yeah, I am going to glue that there. And I kind of like how that is. I don't know, should I leave that? Oh well, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna make this a tuck spot. So I'm going to glue across the top and down the side. So that way, when we put it on like this, it will be a little tuck. I have glue all over my fingers. I don't know if you can see that or not in the video, but <laughs> so there, now we have a little tuck and you can just put something in there like that. So it gives you a little tuck spot. So there we have it. Okay, I'm gonna add, now the next, the last thing I'm gonna do is I wanted to add just a little bit of something to poke out the top. So I need to find a page. I want to use this little piece of trim. Actually, this might be a good page to do it. Let me see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're going to add that trim there. And then I just add a little bit of glue, put that little trim there, and then it's just going to poke out the top, which is going to be, oh geez, I need to add a little bit more glue. Okay, we will get it. There we go. So now it's glued. I think that looks so pretty. It kind of brings that, you know, aged color, this little tan color over to this page. So then whenever you're working, it kind of gives you a little bit more balance of your color. And then you could also use that little tab as um, as a little tuck spot too. You know, you could just tuck something in there and it will look really cute. So there you go. And then the last little top tab that I'm gonna do, um, I, will, I just kinda wanna add maybe this because I love this. I love this dotted Swiss stuff. I use it all the time in my art and I love it. It's like vintage. It's, I, well, I don't really know if they make it now, but I was able to find some curtains of this, of this little, it's kind of like tulle, but with little polka dots on it that are flocked. And I was able to find some curtains of that one time at the thrift store. and. I, I have quite a bit of it, so I use it a lot in my artwork. So, and even that, just that, just doing that makes it look so cute, your page. And when you're ready to come in and do your page, you already have something there that looks so cute. And basically what we were doing is just giving our book, you know, some character. And it has those little things that are peeking out at us. And when you're looking at the book, you're like, oh, that is so pretty. And, you know, as you add things to your journal, it'll keep growing and it'll look really pretty. So 
yeah, that's basically it. And then if you wanted to tie it, you know, you can just get a piece of anything you want. But basically, you know, if you just even just baker's twine would look really cute wrapped around and tied, you know, as a closure. Or you could, um, you could kind of punch a hole here and thread thread some ribbons through and and close it here but I like the I like the tie closures a lot I tend to do that a lot on my journals so there is our finished journal and it is so cute I think it turned out so cute and I hope that you really enjoyed this process and I hope that you found it easy because I was really trying to show how a beginner um, or someone that just really hates sewing uh, could make a journal very simply and not have to put a needle and thread through it. And that was kind of my goal. And I hope that you really enjoyed it. And um, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for being with me through this.